Welcome back to Star Trek Nitpickers, everybody. Lieutenant William here, and today we're talking about the new Lower Decks episode, Moist Vessel. This is a quick no-spoiler review, but if you've seen the episode, you'll likely know what I'm talking about. First off, I like the way this episode started. It was a classic way to start a Star Trek episode. The last episode also had a classic start, and this new one, like that last one, also quickly veers into new territory for Star Trek in a way that I wasn't thrilled with. I honestly want to like this show more than I do so far, so if you like it, I really do respect that, and I'd love to hear from you in the comments section below. My favorite thing about this episode is the animation of the ships in space. I'm a big fan of animation and Star Trek, so I love this TNG ship animation. They do take advantage of the medium in this one in a cool way. Visually, I was into it. The plot lends itself to the animation in this episode, which is cool. Now, obviously, this is a totally different kind of Star Trek show, and it's following its own rules, so though there are tons of little references to other Star Trek shows, it's clear they're inside jokes for fans and not attempts to really connect this world to the world of the old shows. One thing that bothers me as a nitpicker and someone who believes in the importance of consistency in storytelling and the idea of preserving canon is the problematic gray area this show ends up in in terms of is it canon or not. So, there are a few things that come up in this episode that don't jive with canon, and I'm fine with that. I just don't look forward to hearing other fans treat it as canon when I won't be able to. When you get down to it, everyone has their own slightly different idea of what really is and isn't canon. And that's fine. That's the way that it should be. That's the way that it is. But, you know, they tell us in this episode that lower-ranking officers don't have access to a certain luxury that senior officers have access to. Now, it's easy enough to create reasons for why this makes sense in the TNG era, but it just strikes me as getting away from one of the things that made the next generation so great. This idea that people were motivated by a desire to be as productive as they could be by achieving their potential. They weren't motivated by getting access to luxuries. In this episode, it becomes unclear what motivates Mariner, the young woman whose mom is the captain. If you go back to watch the other episodes, you can make an educated guess about what exactly she wants, but it doesn't really make sense why she's in Starfleet when you watch this episode. All in all, I think this was my favorite episode so far, though. This one got a couple of chuckles out of me, so it beats the others in terms of being funny, in my opinion. I think it's fun to hear the voice acting of Jerry O'Connell. He was on Sliders, which was great. It's fun to hear him play a character who's so totally different from the nice guys I remember him playing. He's doing a great job. The actors are all pretty good. This one, this episode, kind of had three plots, and it's fair to say respect is the common theme to all of them. I, uh, I didn't really care for the Ascension thing, it didn't really work for me, but all in all, this one is more like a regular Star Trek episode in terms of the formula for the episode. And, you know, I love that formula. I love the fact that it's a one-shot episode, this one, like Trek always used to be. I'm sick of chapter book style shows. If you've seen this episode, let me know what you thought. If you haven't, let me know what you thought. I'm genuinely curious. So. Leave a comment below, and please subscribe by hitting the red button below. It's free, and there's really no reason not to do it. Thanks for watching. Stay in touch. Live long and prosper.